is up everyone? Welcome back to my channel and again this is Stella and if this is your first time here please don't forget to subscribe and click the bell button for you to be notified on my next video. In today's video I'm going to answer a question from the comment section. So this comment is from teacher Rizal G or Rizal or Rizal. I'm not really sure if I'm pronouncing it well but yeah please correct me if I'm wrong. So Rizal G how do you handle students who are not interested in learning English but teach? <laughs> it really drains me to teach that kind of student. Yeah, it really drains me too. But you know, there are tons of students who doesn't want to learn English, who doesn't want to study, who doesn't want to make some time to sit in there and like talk about English language or what. So just like me, when I was a kid, I don't like studying. <laughs> I would like to play or just be with my friends or what, watching TV, watching movies or just, just doing some things like that. So yeah. The question here is how are you going to make the student interested in English or interested in studying? Now always bear in mind that behind the camera, behind that laptop that you're facing, there's another human being on the other side that you don't know what is going through. Now let me give you some reasons why they won't participate in your class. Number one, they don't understand what we're saying. You're talking a lot. You're talking a lot of words and then they don't understand it. It makes them feel like, oh my god, English is so hard. <laughs> Number two, they are forced to study. Most kids want to play. I mean, all kids want to play. They want to play. And then suddenly they par their parents said, go to your room. You need to study English. And they was like, Oh no! Number three, the student is just simply tired. Hmm. And number four, the naughty and distracted student. Yeah, yeah, yeah! <laughs> number five, they are not feeling well. And the last one, maybe your class is boring. Oh no! Now let me give you some tips on how to make your class fun and easy. Alright Sam? Alright did you know? I'm ready! <laughs> <laughs> wow! Good job! High five! <laughs> Number one, you need to avoid incidental languages. So what is this incidental language? Incidental languages are those words, unnecessary or extra words that you should not say. Because the more you're saying some words, the more you're instructing a lot of words or sentences in class, the more it's complicated for the student to understand, especially for the level zero or level one students. So like, yeah, just like the parrot students, they call the parrot students. So yeah, it's so complicated for them to understand. If you are talking, a lot of words. <laughs> For example, you want to teach the student with the word dog, okay? So most of the time we say, okay, say this, dog, dog, dog. Uh, uh. When you say, no, say this, that's already an incidental language, so you need to avoid that. You can do it like this. Dog. Dog. Okay, so the student will already understand that. And then, plus you're doing TPR, dog, then your turn, dog. Good job. Okay, and then if you're saying this, okay, say it three times, dog, dog, dog. Okay, no. For them to easily understand, you can just do it like this. Dog, dog, dog. They already follow that. Next thing is you need to be happy. You need to be happy. You need to influence the student with the energy, the positive energy that you have. Don't let that negative energy from your student influence you. You need to influence them. Okay, so I can't, yeah, this one. If the student is like, like I mentioned earlier, a distracted student or like doesn't want to participate in class, you need to catch their attention. So how do you catch the attention of the students? Number one is that sometimes I play the music. 
I play the music. I have my music on my music on my cloud disk, or if I'm using a classroom, I have my music on my laptop. <laughs> that I also have here my best friend my puppet I'm using this for a long time guys and it really helped me a lot especially if I'm handling kids so in my trial classes this is oh. hi Sam say hi to them hi nice to meet you guys <laughs> they're actually happy to see my puppet <laughs> you can also use the props the props I actually have a lot of props in my working station but as of now I'm here in my hometown so I just have a few props here that I bring with me so my puppets and this one and other stuffed toys and this the ice cream the stars and this the, the, the happy face and sad face this one so I have the props with me for them to easily understand and of course to catch their attention for example this one you like ice cream? Mm, I like ice cream. Mm. Do you want ice cream too? <laughs> yeah. And aside from that, yeah, the flashcards and everything. It, it's it is very very helpful. And yeah, if this student, if I see the student, like it's yawning, like. <gasps> I know because that's I always say this. Oh no! Are you sleepy? Oh. And most of the time they laugh. <laughs> yeah, I also make fun of my voice. I also make fun of my voice, like, oh my god, what is that? And also like if they don't really bother to to notice me, like I feel oh my god, teacher is sad now. <laughs> yeah, and they usually notice me. Yeah, those are the things that I do. And f to create more engagement in class, reward system are very, very useful. I have here my stars, my stars, my stars. You can get some stars if you do good in our class. So I have different, uh, I actually have different reward systems in class. Before I use monkey and then the bananas and the monkey. Yeah, so I've got some flowers. And also right now, a lot of teachers are using EDB files. I'm also using EDB files. If you know how to make some EDB file, I will put the link down below. And yeah, try to check this video here. This is from Akin Sock. So yeah. I And yeah. Oh, I almost forgot. I also have this student before. I actually applied different things just to catch their attention. His attention. But he doesn't really listen to me. So one thing that I did is that I actually pretend to call his mom. Like, I call his mom like, Mommy! Uh, I forgot the name of that kid. Let's say, let's say, Ben. Mommy, Ben is not listening. And you know what? When I did that, <laughs> he ran and then he's like, he, he participates in class. Yeah, he's afraid of his mom. So like, I'm always pretending like, Mommy, if he's not listening again. So I call his mom and then he's like saying, no, 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 don't call my mom. Like that. Or if the parent is not there, I will pretend that I'm going to call their parents like, Hello, Mommy. Okay, Ben is not listening. Or like, Jerry is not listening here. What should I do? Or something like that. And they got scared. Now, let's talk about the advanced and intermediate level of students. So, 
what you what you need to do is that you need to connect with the student. So if it is your first class together, your first goal, your main goal is to know more about the student. Know about their weakness, know about their strengths, know about the things that they like or the things that they don't like. Know about the things that makes them excited, something like that. So even as we are, we love to be heard, we love to be understood. So yeah, we want someone to understand us. So what you're going to do is like, you need to be that someone for them. So you ask some questions about them, what did, what are the things that they like, and you understand them. You know, oh yeah, I understand. I also feel that way, something like that. And you try to connect to them. And yeah, most of the time, the intermediate and advanced level of students they love competition, so they love those challenging things in class. So I had this student who really loves to do tank twisters. Yeah, she's actually good, but somehow she needs a little bit more practice when it comes to her pronunciation. So I have that idea to do some tongue twisters with her. And she actually knows how to pronounce a tongue twister, but the challenging part is that she needs to do it faster, as fast as fast as she could so you create some activities that you will make them feel excited so or let's say you play we play some games like um i forgot yeah i don't know what to what what is the name of this game but i actually do this in class as well so the student will give some vocabulary so for example our topic is about animals so i will also connect it to the lesson so i i will tell him okay tell me some animal so for example the animal is like crocodile so crocodile since crocodile ends with letter e so i'm going to give another animal that starts with letter e something like that and then let's say elephant now since, since i say elephant he's going to give another uh animal that starts with letter t so until yeah until yeah something like that and it's it's a it's it's fun so or let we will make some competitions with how they read or something like that or we're going to find some words some vocabulary in this certain t thing so yeah that's that's what that's the thing that i do with the the intermediate level of students to test their competitive side <laughs> and yeah play with me and i think the most important thing is that you need to enjoy you need to enjoy bringing the positive energy in the entire class. So as a teacher, yeah, you need to bring that positive energy. And for me, that's the most important thing. If you if, if you are enjoying the class, the student will also enjoy the class mm -hmm. most of the time. But there are certain students as well that, yeah, we just really can't control. <laughs> we can't control them. And... I hope I was able to answer your question, Teacher Rizal. And guys, if you know something or other things that I haven't mentioned in this video, please do comment down below. And please do comment down below of what you think on what you think about the things that I've mentioned in this video. I would really, really appreciate it. And please do like and don't forget to subscribe in this YouTube channel. I will also share some other things that I do in class or some other tips that will be really, really helpful for you guys. And for those people who wanted to be an ESL teacher, you can check out my other videos over here. So that will, I think that will help you a lot. And hope you guys like it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!